Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. And our word for today is plow. Let's stand and sing hymn number 67, Blessed Assurance. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's remain standing for a word of prayer. Dear God, as we come together today, I ask that you teach us your ways and that we will be receptive to your word. I ask that your Holy Spirit fill us in open communication, that you are ready to send directly to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Let's sing number 98. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Dear friend. 
and when, when I googled is plowing a metaphor or simile and uh, they, they seem to believe that plowing is a metaphor and, and it, it means working our way through a problem like a farmer plows through ground. And there are plow quotes galore. And um, here, here's just a, a, a page of them that I got when I Googled plow quotes. And um, okay, the one right in the middle there, plow through the weeds. Go to the auditions, go to the meetings, and be on time. Stop looking to the left or the right. Keep your head down and keep moving. And there's lots of them. Here I have a picture of the Marine Baptist Church Sunday Service Facebook page. And I wanted to show you how to use one of the features if you don't know. And um, you see, okay, on, on the right side of the screen, I've got the word, a yellow arrow with the word search, okay? That little magnifying glass that's got the star around it, that's the search button. And if you search, if you click on that, then it will throw you into the search feature. And I'm gonna show you on the next page what I, what I want you to type, okay? The purpose of this screen is I wanted to show you the video that shows that the prophet Elijah, J-A-H, and uh, you know there's a J-A-H and an S-H-A, and, and the way we remember them is it's alphabetic order. Elijah came before it, Eli-S-H-A. And um, okay, Eli-J-A-H has a plow connection. And if you click on that search button, it will show you a little search box. And, and I've got it up there. And, and if you type Elijah space video space 20210808, then and hit enter, then it will it will throw you into uh, on uh, I've got a link to the, the Elijah video out there uh, on Marine Baptist Church. Now the video's on YouTube, so this is there, this is, somebody put that out there. But I got it, it, it will take you here, if you click on the link, you can view the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And you remember when they, when uh, God, Elijah prayed, and God sent fire down from heaven and uh, lit, lit the sacrifice and the, the prophets of Baal couldn't get that to happen. All right. After God dealt with the prophets of Baal and killed them, their queen, Jezebel, said she was going to kill Elijah. And he took off. He ended up in a cave over a hundred miles south of where they were at. And God showed him his power. Then Elijah, then God told Elijah to anoint Elisha to be prophet in his room. You may remember that was when Elijah experienced a storm, an earthquake, and a fire. But then God spoke to him in a calm, quiet voice and one of the things God told him, Elijah, to do was to travel back to Abel Mahola, and it's a town, and I've got it marked there with the yellow area, arrow, arrow, to succeed him as a prophet. So Elijah set off on the long trip north. Elisha was plowing with oxen. Elijah cast his mantle, oh shoot, this should be over Elisha, okay, 
Elijah left and Elisha ran after him. Let me kiss my father and my mother and I will follow you. And Elijah was in agreement with that. Elijah returned home. <laughs> Elisha returned to his oxen, slew them, made a fire with the plow tools, cooked the oxen, and fed the people. I, I take that to be his neighbors. After Elisha had said goodbye to his previous life, he went to minister to Elijah and stayed with him until Elijah was taken in the chariot of fire. Elisha stayed the course until the end of his life. Elisha exchanged his earthly plow for a spiritual plow and got rid of all of his connections to the earthly plow. Burn the plow, sacrifice the oxen. And he wouldn't, couldn't go back. My understanding, which works for Jesus' parables. Jesus told this parable. Now I'm getting ready to show you some cartoon characters and, and for the adults in the, in the crowd, um, I, I want to remind us that these are cartoon characters, but it's a, this is a story for adults. This is a parable that Jesus told. A man had two sons. The man said to one, son one, go and work in the vineyard today. Son one said, I will not. But son one repented and went to work. Man said to his second son, go to work in the vineyard. Son two said, sure. But son two did not work in the vineyard. Which one did the will of the Father? Matthew 21, 31, and 32. Whether of them, Jesus said, whether of them twain did the will of his Father. The people that he was talking to said unto to him the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John, John the Baptist, came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Then Jesus also said in Luke 9, 62, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Sometimes people accept Jesus as Savior, and they start thinking about all the fun they're missing, or all the stuff they could spend their money on if they didn't have to give it to God. Their work falters and goes bad. Their work in the kingdom, that is. Paul wrote, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing. I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling 
of God in Christ Jesus. Whether we are talking about your salvation, your commitment, your plan for today, whatsoever, once you reach an understanding what God wants you to do, just do it. This is one of my favorite verses, and, and it shows up from time to time. It's kind of an unusual verse. Prophet, the prophet in the Bible, Habakkuk 2.6 wrote, Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Thick clay. Imagine as the, the, the person is plowing and, and the, the ground is getting scooped up on the, and, and he's, he's got clay on his plow and it just keeps sticking to the blade, okay? That clay can bind that plow blade. The dust of this world can bind our steps if we're not careful. I suspect the, the, ex, the, the, the reason that the word plow, P-L-O-U-G-H, was used here was because that may represent Jesus. Fix your eyes on the path. There's a lot of different ways that we are plowing. One is our personal walk. I know people that have accepted Jesus as their Savior, and uh, then they decided, uh, you know, that they, they were agnostic, didn't really know if they wanted to believe it, whatever. I believe there are, I know people who have been called to service. Different little things. Um, uh, there was a man that came here when we first started. He told me that he told God that if this church ever opened again, he would come here. And, uh, and uh, I, I haven't seen him since. He stopped by on an on off hour or off day, and I think. You know, that's just an example. There, there are lots of little things that we do where, we, where we're, we're thinking, I'm going to give that to God. And then we don't. Then there are people that have been called to ministry or to preach. And, and I, I have a man like this when I was growing up. And uh, uh, he, he, answered, he went down in front of the church and said, I believe God called me. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. And uh, I, I don't know whatever happened to him. But Okay. I put this, this particular screen up here because this is Luke 9.62. This is www.biblestudytools.com. And I wanted to, to read this last paragraph. It is not fit for the kingdom of God. That is, to preach the kingdom of God. He cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon being the things of this world. His own interest and the interest of Christ. He cannot rightly perform the work of the ministry while his thoughts and time are taken up in the affairs of the world. 
When we grab the plow, we sow to different ground. The Bible tells us we are laborers with God. God is a spirit. If we're going to be with him, we have to be spiritual also. To sow to the spirit and reap spiritual fruits. And that is the prize. We need to keep our eyes on that prize. As, as we sow, we are reaping eternal rewards. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, I ask that you will go with us as we leave this place, that you will lead our way. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do. And may your name be praised. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.